The reason I uh, picked this topic is um, I just want to kind of let people know how relevant it is. And um, it's one of the oldest medicines on earth, if not the oldest medicine. And uh, it survived many different changes within the planet uh, in energy and in everything and has traveled around the world. And it's as still as alive today as it ever was. And, you know, I believe um, lots of the things that are happening and that have happened over the last while, it's, it's all about disconnection. It's led to a lot of disease, a lot of sickness with people, with communities, with countries. And um, during this COVID thing, everything came to a stop, came to... Um, a halt, let's say, and uh, hopefully it gave people time to reflect. Uh, people had to spend more time with family, had to spend more time with themselves. They were isolated to smaller little communities. Maybe they start talking to their neighbours and to the things. Uh, and we'll come away with a different perspective on life and on things. And maybe they'll know now that you know, they don't have to stay on the, the old turn wheel all the time and keep grinding and, you know, survival. But anyway, this is what we've planned for you today. We're just going to give you a little introduction to shamanism. This is going to be short, sweet, like an Estes Gallop. Uh, how, how it may help you, shamanism. A meditation to ground and connect you to the Mother Earth. The power of ceremony. Uh, journey to connect you to a guide that may help you in today's world, which is very important. And then hopefully thank you. Now, introduction to shamanism. And before I start, I'd just like to share um, words of wisdom um, that I got through. This book I read it many years ago, um, Mother Earth Spirituality. It's all about ceremony, Native Americans' path to healing ourselves and the world. And it was written by a guy, Ed McGaw, Eagle Man. But in it um, was a piece uh, um, from Chief Seattle, which I want to share with you now. I only took a little excerpt from it. Uh, excerpts from it. And he wrote this in um, 1854 to the President of America. Uh, who was trying to buy the land off him, um, basically, to, to, and put them to a reservation. But so this is really even re very relevant today, and I just want to share these things with you. Whatever befills the earth, befills the sons of the earth. Man did not weave the web of life. He is merely a strand in it. Whatever he does to the web, he does to himself. The white shall pass, perhaps sooner than all the other tribes. Continue to contaminate your bed. You will one night suffocate in your own waste. You know, we're at that space already. And where is the ticket gone? Where is the eagle gone? And what is it to say goodbye to the swift pony? the hunt, the end of living and the beginning of survival. And that's as relevant today as it was in 1854. And um, I just think he had so much wisdom in the words that it'll never go out of date till we connect to our hearts and, and, and to change. Now, what is shamanism to me? My experience with shamanism has been that um, more than maybe me finding it, it found me. And it's a connection to myself, to who, who I really am. It's breaking down all the barriers, taking away the pretenses, the falseness, the uh, energies that you have to be this, you have to conform to this, you have to conform to that. Instead, it, it just takes away everything and it connects you to yourself, to your 
to your spirit, to your soul. And it gives you a peace of heart and peace of joy. Um, and helps to slow you down. It is a journey. It's, it's a journey of realization. It's a journey of uh, truth. Uh, being true to yourself, firstly, and to no one else. And then if you can learn to live with your own truth and you can learn to love yourself, you can bring this outwardly into the world. This would be my my um, I just have some notes here, but it would be my this this is this is what it is for me. Also what it is for me and and, and I believe for lots of people um, that have come and done the medicine with us over the years, it's 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 a journey of empowerment. It's a journey where we step into being ourselves and and to come out and to be who we are and not afraid to show the world that and to and to live with peace with ourselves and is to have that connection with, with everything that's there. Um peace of mind, connecting to your ancestors, connecting to the spirit world. No one also that everyone's our brother and our sister, that everyone that walks the earth, walks this planet, don't forget everyone's on a journey. We're all here to um, to help each other. Everyone's a brother, everyone's a sister. Every The elders are a father and a mother, and they're a grandfather and grandmother. They come with the wisdom, they come with the beauty, they come with the energy to help us on our journey probably in, in from the grandfather energy myself now even though i try to deny it sometimes but you know where i'm coming from why do we need it now in our life because there's so much disharmony there's so much disconnection there's so much um falseness the the, the, the world is ruled now by they forget they're on the earth, lots of people. People are running from here to there to work. Uh, coming home, doing the thing with the family, going to bed, getting up in the morning, going to work again. Maybe the only time you may have for yourself is a little while on a Saturday or Sunday or whenever. But there's no connection in that. And you're not feed, feeding the soul, like soul food. We say in shamanism is very important to us. What excites you? What makes you tick? What's your dream? What what do you what do you you know, even in most of us that are really dead at times, there's a dream. There's something I wish I could do this, I wish I could be here. The only thing that stops you being there and doing that is you. And it's 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 the conditioning and the fear and all the stuff that we have bought with us. We were born, we were born beautiful little souls, pure, clean, and magical. And then through the fears maybe of our parents, the fears of community, the fears of different things, we are conditioned. And we're, we're, we're told that we need to live a certain way. And for lots of people, that kills their soul, that kills their energy. But the fear basis, they're afraid to step off the treadmill and to come out to be themselves. Now is the time to do this. Because after all the reflection people have had, their connection with families, the connection with themselves, it's, 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 it's time to stand in your truth. Everything is based on fear and a lot of things that if you don't do this and you don't do that, that um, you know, you will fail and you will be in trouble. You won't pay your mortgage. You won't do this and that. Well, that has to be done too. But why do we need it now? We need it now because we need to rise the vibration of the earth. We need to bring it to a higher vibration so that we can transcend together. We can be um, we can be whole in our in our in ourselves, and we can push along in ourselves to to be ourselves. We're entitled to be ourselves. We're entitled to be free. We're entitled to have joy. We're entitled to have love. And if we bring these things into our own soul, into our own heart, we will bring it to the world. We will bring it to our families and to the world. I also believe that when we make the decision to change, you know, community may talk about us. I always say you could be headlines for a week, but then to someone else. 
But when we make that, we take that courage and that trust within ourselves to change, to be ourselves, I always reckon we empower other people to do the same. We give them, we give them the, the courage to do that too. So that's why we need to do it now because the world needs us to do it. We need to keep the vibration high so that we can transcend with that beautiful energy. Don't forget we're in fifth dimensional energy. So there's a big change coming on the 21st of June. So let's flow with that. Ancestors. Uh, anyone that knows me always hears me talking about the ancestors. Doug, a friend of mine, uh, we were doing a fire ceremony one time. And in the fire ceremony, we were just together doing a fire in honor of the ancestors. And I never forget, he was sitting in the smoke and he was coughing and choking. And he said, Paul, he said, I just love talking to the ancestors. Lots of times we forget our ancestors and we forget who they are. We have this perception that when we do the ceremony with them, be it in the Christian ceremony or whatever, say the mass and they do the thing and they bury them, that's the end of them. Then we may mourn them for a little while and then gradually they, we disconnect with them. And maybe every year or over the years there's a mass or there's something and we just kind of gather. But the ancestors are much more than that. The ancestors are our lineage of our father's line, our mother's line. The, the lineages are from miscellaneous lines. And the miscellaneous lines stand in the middle. And these are the fathers and mothers we've had in other lives and other lineages. So when we connect to that energy and we walk with the ancestors, we, we're never, ever alone. And you're never not loved because they love you. And we always ask for the energies and the ancestors that are in heaven, higher vibration, to come and help us and to work with us. And those that love us, important words, those that love us. And they will always walk with you. So when you connect with your ancestors, you're connecting with the ancestors of your families, come back, that have walked this earth before, that have come across some of the things you've come across maybe and, and can come with that wisdom to help you to, to, um, to move on. Connect to your ancestors. It's lovely. And I know that we connect with our mothers and our fathers and we think of them often, but it goes deeper than that. It's their lineage has gone back. And they're only meant to work with us and to come. So please connect with your ancestors. We just talked a bit about this harmony. Um, and it's, it's the underlying word that um, puts people out of sorts. You see, when you're in alignment, you're in alignment with your true self, with your higher self, with the energy of the creator. Also, you're standing in the center of your own universe. You're absolutely in the middle. You're connected to everything that is, and you're in that beautiful, beautiful space. And when you're in that beautiful, beautiful space, you're connected to your heart, you're connected to the love. You're absolutely one with everything. And it's, a, it's an amazing feeling. Anytime we're in disharmony, we're agitated, we're angry, we're taking it out on our kids, we're all these kind of things. We're out of sync. We need to come back into the center and to be. And what this harmony is, I always say, it leads to disease because we're in that space where, you see, the Indians said a long time ago when the native, the native said when uh, the white man came to America, he builds concrete roads to bring him nowhere fast because basically he's going from one concrete city to another concrete city. So he's blocked the earth out under him. He doesn't feel the earth beneath him. He doesn't connect with the earth. And that leads to disharmony in so many ways, but it also leads to disease. We use shamanic tools to do our work. Lots of times we use... Lots of people would use the sage and the thing is to help to balance things and to bring peace into things. Drums for journey, rattles to help us with the work. And various other things, crystals, stones, all these kind of things. Because we believe everything has a, has a spirit. Everything is connected. We are in the web of life. We are connected to everything. And I'll be going into it a little bit. One of, the, one of my uh, great teachers has been Vision Quest. Um, and um, 
it's where you basically go into the mountain for three, four days and you sit with spirit and you, you connect to that energy. Uh, and I'm not going into it too deep now, but what actually happens in that space, you step off that energy of the world and off this disharmony and you sit with yourself. Some of the stuff that will come up, you may not like it. Why did I do this? What did I say to this person? Why did anger and stuff starts to come up and starts to clear? Then you go to this beautiful space of, of, of peace and harmony and, and connection the way it should be. And um, when you do this, uh, you can do it for different reasons or whatever. But it's like step. The only way I can describe it to you is like stepping off the earth. And when you come back after the three, four days, whatever you do, you hear the noise of the cars and all that stuff again. You can feel the disharmony and people rushing, going nowhere fast, really. Buddha strengthens you when he gives you peace of mind. So, you know, I'm not saying that you have to do a vision quest. Um, I'm just saying it's taking time out, sitting with self, putting space, uh, making space available for yourself, maybe to do ved meditation. It slows you down and bring you into that, pla that, that place of peace and mind. Connects your soul, your spirit, your energy together and brings you, and brings you peace. Meditation is a very, very powerful, powerful tool to use. And it just gets us off that place. And there's nothing nicer than working as a family to do meditation or a husband or a wife or partners or whatever to meditate together and to share afterwards that brings us together. See, we're too afraid to take the time out. We're too afraid to step off the treadmill. It's about getting back and about grounding. And I will be doing the grounding exercise with you now in a little while to show you how to ground. Frog. Yeah. Good medicine, the frog. Sometimes people are going through their, their stuff and awakening. We, we, we travel along in life and we're doing what we think we should be doing. We're working, we're providing, we're doing all the things that, that um, need to be done uh, to provide. Uh, our house, our shelter, um, our place for our families and whatever. And in lots of cases, we're actors. When we go to work, we behave in a certain way. When we're out with our friends, we behave in another way. If we come home, we behave in another way in front of our children. We can have up to maybe hundreds of acting roles. And you know what I'm trying to say here. But that means what we're doing in that space. We don't know who we are. And also, we are acting out to our bosses, to our work colleagues, who they think we should be. And we are being that person to them. And in a different role, in a different role, a different role, we're, we're doing all these different things of who, of who you are to them, instead of coming into self and saying, who am I? Who's my true self? And lots of times when we when we go on this journey and we start to wake up uh, and question these things, sometimes this can lead to depression, different things, midlife crisis, lots of people call it, because all of a sudden we're starting to see the world different. What's my purpose in life? Is my purpose just to be bringing in the money? doing this, bringing in the money, doing this, endless thing. Have I any purpose in life? Is my earth walk just going to be null and void? Have I, have I an actual purpose? Is there something I can do to help my brothers, my sisters, my fathers, my mothers, my grandfathers, my grandmothers? Is there something I can do to help the earth? Can I make it a better place for the people that come after me? Native Americans, again, um, will tell you that when they make a decision about the environment, they try to make it so that it will not affect the, the children seven generations ahead. So, you know, what's my purpose? How can I make a difference? Am I here to make a difference? Can I make it to my community, to my family? Can I, can I help in, in, in these ways? Again, this is accessing the truth, your own truth, and being in your truth to, to yourself to make the difference.
when you ask all these questions and the stuff starts to clear and sometimes we can go into a really really dark place it's because don't forget our soul our spirit you know we have free will in all this um and in the free in the free will we can either connect or we can't but sometimes it'll bring us down into that very dark deep place within our soul and sometimes when you're in that place you try to make things better you make them worse you dig the hole deeper till you can go down or farther and then at some stage someone will come along or something will happen when you start to see the light again and then you start to grow it's like the little seed that's pushed down into the earth i always quote this and that seed is covered over with clay and it's pushed down and the weight of the earth is on it and what actually happens is um it has two choices either to die or to live but invariably it pushes its way up and it comes and up above the ground connects with the sun and connects into a beautiful flower blossoms and gives us all joy but then when it's time that flower dies again and the, repeats the process over and over See, we go through death and rebirth many times in our life. When we're born to when we start to go to school, when we leave school, get married, to changing jobs, divorce, whatever. All the different things are all deaths, rebirths. Sometimes it can bring stressful energy to you because your soul is saying to you, it's time to change, time to go. This, this is, you're walking dead. There's no feeling. There's no nothing in life because you're on this treadmill of survival. So... Sometimes the fear stops us going, and this leads to disease, to, 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 uh, disease. and the disease is D-I-S-E-A-S-E. We're, we're not easy with ourselves. We have no connection to our soul or to our spirit. But sometimes what happens, the people come out of that and they start to say, who am I? What's my purpose? How can I make a difference? Connected to my soul. Start to love yourself within. Start to be, and then you grow. You blossom as a beautiful, beautiful flower. You have to love yourself first. One of the hardest lessons for me was to start to love myself because we weren't trained or taught to love ourselves. And um, it's, it's, it's working from the heart and going into the heart. And it's for you to be truthful to yourself. And we're entitled to happiness. We're entitled to be happy. You know, it's a, it's a thing of mind. And we, a lot of us are victims and we, we are conditioned into that thing. And, you know, people will say to you, who do you think you are? If I am happy. Happiness is infectious. A smile is infectious. And if you always smile with your heart, have the smile on your heart, have the happiness in your heart and the joy. And it's just a matter of changing the energy in here. That's essential. And just work with it. I love this one. It, it, it comes from Kenneth Meadows, Shamanic Spirit. Uh, Kenneth Meadows was probably one of the first shamanic books I read after Michael Harron or The Way of the Shaman. We are like a frog in a lily pond with the freedom to move by choosing which lily leaf to land on next. We determine our destiny. I, I just think that's brilliant. And, you know, all the things I'm saying there about fear, about disharmony, about you know, sometimes we're conditioned. I have to go this way because this is what I was told I need to do. But you don't. You you just, you. it's about following your heart and being true to yourself. That takes a lot of courage and a lot of, a lot of things. But it brings so much joy, so much happiness. Like I would never, ever go back to where I was. Going to bed with pains in my heart. Uh, thinking I was going to get heart attacks, worrying about work, worrying about stuff, because I was rowing up the river in the canoe. And as I rowed up the river in the canoe one day, my hands got so, so tired, the canoe just turned around and started to float down the river. And I haven't rowed up the canoe since. I haven't rowed up the river since. So that helps you. We are like a frog in a lily pond, with the freedom to move by choosing. Which lily leaf to land on next? We determine our destiny. Beautiful one. Now, onto a, a meditation to help you to connect to the earth. Because this is where we are. We're on the Mother Earth. And the energy is, we have to connect to it. And that's why lots of time our sickness 
our disease and all these things come to us is because of this connection, this connection to the mother earth. Don't forget it's our mother. Everything that comes to us here on this planet comes from the earth. The board behind me, the wall, the table here that I'm sitting at, the, the, my connection to the floor, the chairs come from the, the tree people, from, from the mineral people within the ground, from the water people, from the air people, from everything. Everything we need is supplied to us by the mother. Lots of times we don't even give her thanks. We just take it for granted. The car you're in, the steel, the metal, all the stuff, all comes from the mother, nowhere else. We have no connection to another planet to bring in stuff. So, you know, you have to give thanks to the Mother Earth. She's been very patient with us. So now the meditation is a very, very simple one. And this meditation was given to me by Peter von Mantis, Zanzi Mula, one of my teachers many years ago. And I found this very, very powerful and very, very um way of connecting with the Mother Earth, but also it, 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 it teaches you humility. So if you want to work with me now, what I would like you to do is just to, if you can, just go down on your knees. And I want you to stand on your knees, that you're up on your knees, and your legs are slightly <laughs> apart. And you just close your eyes now. And I just want you now to imagine that you're, from your knees down, your feet are in the ground. And between your feet and the ground, there's a dark blue ball the size of a tennis ball. This is your earth chakra. And what I want you to do now is to imagine a dark blue light going from your root chakra, your groin area, and connecting with the dark blue ball in the ground. And as it connects to the ball in the ground, you just relax. And you'll feel a pull. Yeah, I'm feeling it here. That's your connection to the Mother Earth. Now, all the crap that's going on in your head, all the fear-based stuff, just imagine inside in your head, the top of your head, there's a lift. Just press the button there for it to open and let all that fear and all that stuff go into the lift. And when it's in there, just press the button, BB, belly button and bring it down into the belly. Just open it at the belly and just let all that negative thought form and energy into your belly. And that's the cord now to take it into the earth. You feel it going down through and into the earth. You don't have to do anything, just ask the cord to take it in. The earth chakra will look after it. You feel your belly empty. Now, just on your belly button, just imagine, just like if you went into a confessional, opening the little slide door, and there's a little grill or a net just there as it exposes. So all the negative energy that's out around your body, in your auretic field or your crystal body, suck it in, suck it into your belly. Then when you're finished, just close the little door. And again, along the cord, let the energy go down into the, into the Mother Earth. Earth loves negative energy. It eats it, it transmutes it. It uses it as a fertilizer. Now 
Now, when you feel that is done, I just want you to allow positive energy from the earth to come up into your belly, from the tree people, the plant people, from rivers, the lakes, the skies, the rocks, the minerals within the earth, wherever, up into your body. And this is to make you stronger, clearer. And as it comes up into our belly, again, we just open the little button, the little door on our belly button, and just let it push out into a rhotic field, especially to the places that need to be filled from the negative energy we took. And when that's done, I'll just close the little door. You feel that energy tingle around your body. Outside. And now the energy that comes up into your belly, this is for your body. Let it go wherever it needs to go in your body, into your brain, into your head, into your shoulders, arms, legs, wherever it needs to go. And now, when that is done, with the cord still connected in the ground and our feet still in the ground, we come up on one knee, then we come up onto the second knee in a squat position and we leave our feet on the ground and we slowly stand up and bring the cord with us. And when you do, we just breathe. Okay, you can sit down. Now, when we stand, we stand in our ego. And when we kneel, we kneel in humility. We have no thought, we have no uh, attachment to our thoughts. So when we kneel and walk like in that process um, and connect to the Mother Earth and connect to our Earth Chakra, the disconnection from the day, the energies from the day, the disharmony, all that kind of stuff, that's one way of getting rid of it. And the more you do that, and the more you do that on your knees, the stronger it will get. And you'll be able to do it pretty quickly. But also, don't forget to bring in the beautiful, beautiful energy from the Mother Earth. So I hope that little exercise will help you on your way and, uh, and bring you to finding who you are and your connection with the Mother. Power of ceremony. Um, we used to do a lot of ceremony in one time as a nation, as a Celtic nation. And um, we, we connected through ceremony. One of the things I want to talk about for a minute is the talking stick. When we gather in ceremony to do our classes, to, to meet, to do whatever, we, we use what we call a talking stick. It's a stick that's, a stick that's programmed with the spirit of the energy in it, so that when it comes to you, that you talk for your heart. We sit in circle. We don't sit uh, one at the top and people down, because that's telling. Everyone's in circle. Everyone shares the story. And in that story that they're sharing, to bring them the energy into the community with love and compassion so that the energy can be healed collectively. Um, and we, it means that no one is greater than no one else. And I know in some places, in, in some schools going back, I've heard where they bought the talking stick in and the kids use the talking stick. I think it's a beautiful idea. But there's no judgment. There's no ego. Everyone's there. Everyone's the same. All the brothers and sisters, all the grandfathers and all the grandmothers. Uh, types of ceremony, I was just going to talk about one I did, was involved with for years, and Willie O'Toole is doing it in Galway now, is the fire ceremony. He's doing a great job. I've done fire ceremony for quite many years. I've been guided to it, and I've seen so many amazing things happening at the fire. And what amazed me, we were doing fire ceremonies, 
I'm sure Willie will tell you the same. We went there nights that, you know, you wouldn't put a cat out. You get 20, 30 people coming. And every night people would come to the fire. And I always thought of that film, build it and they will come. I think it was Tom Cruise or someone that was in that film about a baseball in this field. But anyway, um, and the reason people were coming there was because they were looking for ceremony. They were looking for that real ancient connection back to the fire, back to themselves, to connect with the ancestors. We just did a bit of drumming and a bit of healing and, and, and kept it very, very simple. And afterwards, we would go back to our place and we'd have tea, some chocolate biscuits or whatever. But it was connecting the community. And it was just ceremony. And what was beautiful about what's beautiful about that kind of ceremony or any ceremony, there's no judgment in that space. Sweat lodge is another thing that uh, I've done quite a bit of. And sweat lodge is where they build up this round dome thing and they cover it with tarpaulin and they boil the stones and bring the stones in and you sweat. You do the four directions in it. But basically, it's, it's going through. The, the vagina back into the womb to be reborn again. It's a beautiful, beautiful ceremony. And now they're doing lots of sweat lodges in, in America with, with ex-soldiers that have post-traumatic stress and it's, it's helping them know in uh, vision quest I've talked about. Naming ceremonies. When we go to Sundance and we do the medicine there, there's seven ceremonies within the Sundance. But one of the ceremonies is uh, is a naming ceremony, and that's where I received my name, Grey Elk. And, that's, and it's important because it was explained to me that when you talk to the spirit world, the spirit world don't know you as Paul, but they know you as, as Grey Elk. They know you as your, as your spirit name. So um, that's another ceremony. Uh, bead ceremonies are ceremonies that are done in Africa, which we have done, and that's when you're doing your... Your, your training uh, in the Sangoma stuff on the different levels, you get different beads. But they're, they're, all these are, are, are energies. And one of the things that I've written here is, I believe, you know, lots of times, there's lots of disharmony because we don't do ceremony as a community. But also, the ceremonies in rites of passage, all the tribes have them when a boy becomes a man, when a, when a girl becomes a woman. And I believe what has actually happened, what, because there's no rites of passage as such, uh, they've all been taken from us in a way, uh, is people grow up. That's why there's so much drugs, so much alcoholism, so much anger, so much things in community. They don't know who they are. They don't know if they're a boy, they don't know if they're a man, they don't know if they're a girl, they don't know if they're a woman. They have, there's no defining moment in it to say that. So the medicine wheel and the directions. The medicine wheel is uh, very, very old. And in different cultures, the medicine wheel, the different directions will mean different things. But basically, just to tell you that in the South, in my medicine wheel, we connect with the water and the emotions. In the West, we connect with the physical aspect of the being, and we connect with the death energy and the earth energy. The north, you connect with the air and the ancestors. And the east, you connect with the fire and you connect with, with spirit. Also, around the medicine wheel, uh, medicine man one told me that, you know, it's, when, we, when we walk the medicine wheel, we're walking the energy of caring. When we're born, we need caring and we need to experience that. So that helps us to activate our feeling so that we bring feeling into our being and into herself and then we bring that feeling with us into relationship and through that through relationship we learn respect we've got to listen to these four energies to 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 be whole so lots of times there's no respect because the the people haven't had a relationship they hadn't had feeling they hadn't have caring and in today's world what's actually happening is people babysitters, um, that other, um, uh, for the crushes things. Kids go in there from their six months old. The parents don't get them again till their seven, eight o'clock in the evening. Then they're just putting them to bed. So that caring, that bonding, that feeling, that relationship 
is 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 very very little and then there's kind of no respect for the people for your father your mother for your grandfathers your grandmothers because you've been all over the place so it's 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 a matter of us connecting prayer empowerment when you activate your medicine wheel and you stand in the middle you're between all the worlds the worlds below the worlds above you make your prayer it doesn't have to be a religious prayer the best way to pray is from the heart with with feeling and with intent uh if you go into a church and they recite the rosary nya, 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 there's no feeling in that but if they put feeling in anything that you do and intent in it and you really connect from your heart to the divine that's the most powerful way you 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 can um, you can make your prayer just one little thing on the ancestors here i talked about them earlier on and i just want to say what's a lovely ceremony to do is if you're going to another country which maybe lots of us won't be gone this year we'll be staying where we are but when you were going again is to make out a spirit place and call on the ancestors of that country to be there to help you when you go there and introduce your ancestors from your father's line and your mother's line that you are coming with your ancestors and you come in peace and i can believe you i believe you me that when you go there you'll have a beautiful experience because things will flow but when you're finished there thank them ancestors and your ancestors for being with you uh, and it's nice what i do is to put out a spirit plate uh, to your own ancestors or to the ancestors especially when you go there some nights you're having a meal if you make a little spirit plate bring it with you and leave it out to the ancestors to thank them for for their work but one time in peru we we had done that ceremony so when we were finished in peru we um we did a ceremony to thank we said a melanie to thank the spirits of um the spirits of um Peru for inviting us there by our ancestors and we had an, an amazing experience with them and we got the advice can we come with you so they had to come to Ireland for a while so in seven months I had to go back to bring them back to Peru but you know that's okay I uh, I enjoyed it um nature nature is screaming out for us to 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 be with it for 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 connection you know um one of the easiest things to connect is tree people it's just sitting with the tree an energy i love to do with people sometimes as a plant is to get a plant and get them to talk to the plant and be with the plant and it's all you have to do is to recognize that energy and believe you me in nature and connection to the earth there's so many teachings the land has been one of my greatest teachers the tree people have taught me many many things um fairy energy all these kind of energies come and go and they help you but it's about the connection and and you know all these will they have wisdom trees are hundreds of thousands of years old they've been here long long before us and here after us and they're connected all around the mother earth believe it or believe it not but we just look, you see when we're not in, we're in a place of ego we look we don't recognize so the next time you go for a walk in the wood don't walk at race pace slow down and walk and look and be observant and as you're observant you may see a beautiful bunch of flowers or trees just shine out that tree's calling you don't be afraid to go up to it and sit beside it put your back to it you don't have to put your arms around it and uh or sit beside the little bunch of flowers and see, see see what happens so simple can be your teacher another i'm going to do a journey with you now and it's a very simple journey just take about 10 minutes and i know i was late starting and i'm, I'm, I'm i just got mixed up in times and i'm sorry and i hope um all the people that needed to see this and to get this will will get it anyway so this is now where you sit and just relax and i just want you to close your eyes and just to breathe in through your nose and as you breathe in through your nose you bring your breath up your back and as you breathe out 
you bring the breath down the front. And as you breathe out, you relax and get rid of all the heavy stuff. So we breathe up the chi, we bring it up our back. And we breathe out the heavy stuff so the energy can flow down the front. And one more. Now I just want you to see yourself sitting somewhere in nature, somewhere that you can relate to that's safe, that you love to go. And maybe when you're in a distressed state or in where you find peace, be it by the sea, by a rock, on a bench, a mountain, wherever. My first place was a tree that I used to play in, an oak tree. I was a child overlooking Bandakil Bay and the Twelve Pins. From that tree I travelled the world. I didn't know it was shamanic at the time, but anyway, it was wonderful. So just be in that place. And as you feel the ground beneath you, be it gravel, grass, sand, whatever, even water, your feet, just connect to it. And if you have a power element of spirit guides, so be it. Let them be with you now. If not, we're with you. And you turn to your left and you see a little hill gradually rise up. I want you to walk up that path towards the top of that green grassy hill. The big bright sun shining down on you. You feel it on your skin. The air is light. It's so joyful. As you walk up and over and down into that little valley. I always kind of see midgets and moths and things like that kind of flying around that little valley. It's kind of stuffy, it's, but it's nice. So we walk along down that side till we come to this beautiful, beautiful woods. Long, slim trees with the path into it. We call it the Enchanted Wood. Wavy path, bluebells, daffodils, snowdrops, butterflies, bees, Birds singing. And as the wind blows high above you, you hear the ruffle of the leaves and the ray of the sunshine as it comes down. It's kind of like a path you want to run along. It's so full of fairy energy, energetic energy. It brings joy to your heart as you walk deeper into that woods, that windy path. Till at last you come to an opening. There's two stones, one on the left and one on the right. Two big stones. The sun shines down on them. I want you to stand at the stone on the right. And as you do, just put your back to it. If you want to sit down, I'll put your back to it and face the stone on the left. We ask the spirit guide for the other stone to appear. I want us to help you through the energies from today on and to help you to connect to yourself and to be. It may come in the form, I see wolves, I see different things coming. And I see some ancestors standing, and some guides, and whatever it is, it will be for you. Some of you will see it, some of you will feel it, some of you will sense it. Whatever way it comes, it comes. So I just want you to walk into the middle as the guide, as the spirit comes to you. You hold hands. Open your heart to it as it opens its heart to you. Ask it its name and introduce yourself.
as you turn to the left, start to walk back the path again, it will come back with you. Down that windy path. Some of you are holding hands with it, that's beautiful. Up that windy path. And up across that little valley as you climb up the, the brown side of the hill, the dark side. The sun is on your back as you come to the top. And down the green, green slope, down into your power place. And now, just say to your guide, this is where I go from. This is where I will meet you. If I need you, this is where I will come. And for now, I release you. And all my spirit guides are releasing. Go home till I need you again. I thank you. And now you come back into your... Into your body and into your being. Just thank all the spirits that worked with you. Very short, simple journey. Come back into the room. Just breathe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So just to... to let you know that we're rapidly moving into fifth dimensional energy. There's new chakras out since 214. And uh, lots of people are working with them, particularly the navel chakra, uh, which connects us to Atlantis as well. And the new energy, the vibration is love. So when I was talking earlier on about us keeping that vibration up, that's what I'm talking about, is for us as a community, as a people, to keep our vibration high. And when we do that, we bring in the energy of love and we eradicate the energy of fear. So just a little thing to, to finish that I think is very re relevant um, in today's world. And this is, to me, is ageless as well. Of Tom Crockett's Stone Age Wisdom, Healing Principles of Shamanism. So if I just read this for you, just bear in mind. There are people who believe that shamanism is the spiritual property of one culture. I am grateful for the planetary legacy shamanic cultures have preserved for us. I'm wary of stealing their souls. There are, there are people who believe that shamanism can only be useful in foreign places. I find the need for sham shamans everywhere I go. Life without soul is as sad in the city as it is in the jungle. There are people who believe that true shamans are recognized by their communities. I believe that shamans have always served communities. The new shamans will have to remember how to create communities. There are people who believe that shamanism is only authentic if it's in our ancestral tradition. I agree, but it's in shaman, shaman, shamanism, everyone's ancestral tradition. Don't we all dance around the same fires? There are people who believe that shamanism is dying out. I believe that shamanism was with us from the beginning and is with us still. A linkage like that should not be underestimated. There are people who believe their path is the only path. If you found a path of spirit that takes you where you need to go, stay on it. We'll meet at the top of the mountain. There are people who travel vast distance, vast distances to experience and experience shamanism. I want to know what you do when you come home. Are your visions growing corn? I just think that's so apt in today's world. 
And listen, I want to thank you so much. I hope I've made some sense to you. Uh, I try to give you a little um, cross section of shamanism in a way and put out some stuff there that may help you. If you have any questions, please, you know, con contact us on uh, info at pathwayteaching.com and we'll, we'll answer them. And again, I'm sorry for being late. I got mixed up in the times. Um, and I want to thank Freddie for giving me this opportunity with Psychic Fairs to, to be on this podcast to do this. Thank you all and uh, do have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.